Hello, everybody, and welcome to Adulting 101 Killer Cover Letters. My name is Alexa, and I am the Assistant Head of the Digital Services Department at the Niles Library. All right, our agenda for today's class is we will be going over the importance of cover letters, three things decision makers look for, anatomy of a killer cover letter, and answers to your frequently asked questions. All right, now the first question we're gonna ask ourselves is, is a cover letter worth it? And the simple answer is, yes it is. Thank you, Jim Halpert. Um, a cover letter is an early opportunity to grab the attention of the hiring manager. Now, a cover letter is not mandatory, but it is a wonderful tool to make a great first impression. It helps a potential employer see very quickly how your skills, your experience, and your career goals line up with what the company is looking for. And the goal of the cover letter is to help you get an interview. Now, there are three questions decision makers ask themselves when looking at your resume and cover letter. So let's go over those questions. All right, the first question is, can you do the job? The second one is, do we like you? And the third is, are you a good fit? You obviously want the answer to all of those questions to be yes. By using a cover letter, you are able to specifically answer why you can do the job, why they're going to love you, and that you are the perfect fit for their company. The cover letter is a chance to be specific about what you can deliver when hired. You can show off a bit of your personality in the cover letter and share stories that convey why you are the right person for the job. All right, let's get into the anatomy of a killer cover letter. So first you want to grab them at the hello. What this means is you wanna captivate the hiring manager from the first sentence and stay on point. This is your first opportunity to evoke a positive and emotional response while positioning yourself as both a skills fit and a cultural match for the company. So here's an example of what I might use in my cover letter if I was applying for a librarian position. I might say something like, what gets me fired up every morning is the burning desire to strive toward my full potential, not only as an information coach, but as a person who loves to learn and thrives on creativity that comes from finding ways to help others succeed in their endeavors. Now, I might be biased, but I would totally hire me on that intro alone. All right, the next part of the cover letter is to provide direct evidence that you have the specific skills this company is looking for. In this section, there is no need to sugarcoat anything. You wanna spell it out in a very obvious way that you are the person they want for this position. In this section, you can use a couple bullet points to get your point across, but don't feel like you have to list out every qualification you have. You're trying to make it easy for them to see you as a strong fit so they feel com compelled to invite you in for an interview. So an example I might use in my pursuit of a librarian position may be that I am a trusted ally in the lives of patrons and the community. My philosophy as a librarian is to be an information coach to the people of the community. That means I am supporting their efforts and immersing themselves in what interests them, teaching digital literacy, how to navigate the online world, and most importantly, to become a trusted resource when they have questions or need professional guidance. Again, I would hire me on that alone, but I am biased. All right, and finally, with your cover letter, you want to close strong. You wanna wrap up your cover letter by summarizing how great you are for this job and encouraging the hiring manager to invite you in for an interview. The key with your closing is to create something that ties everything together without being pushy or cliche. You wanna show confidence and enthusiasm, briefly summarize why you think you're a great fit, express your gratitude for their time and consideration in reading your cover letter, and most importantly, ask for the interview. All right, now we're gonna move on to some frequently asked questions in regard to creating a cover letter. All right, so the first frequently asked question is, who do you address the cover letter to? Great question. Um, 
you always want to try and address it to the hiring manager. Some job descriptions will say who they want you to um, address it to, but if they don't, go ahead and use dear hiring team or dear hiring manager. Uh, this option's a lot better than dear sir, dear madam, or to whom it may concern. You want to make it seem a little more personal than just um, just a general to you, sir. All right, how long should your cover letter be? Uh, no one is going to start puking if your cover letter is over a page, um, but you wanna make sure that your cover letter is being concise and to the point. So, I mean, I wouldn't write a thesis, but if your cover letter spills over to two pages, no big deal, but just make sure everything that you're adding in and including is really relevant um, and succinct and to the point and really showcasing all your best features. All right, what makes a bad cover letter? A bad cover letter focuses more on what you want out of the company than what you can deliver to the company. Uh, the employee cares almost exclusively about what you can offer versus what you're looking for. Now, this is just until you get into the door. Obviously, your employer is gonna care about you, but right now, they are looking to see who is going to benefit them the most. That's how they are using the criteria to whittle down um, different candidates. So what can you give to them? So a bad cover letter will not focus on something like that. A bad cover letter is also completely redundant of your resume. They've already seen your resume or they've looked at it, so you don't need to reiterate it in your cover letter. You wanna use your cover letter to connect the dots between their needs and your background. So make sure that your cover letter and your resume are two separate entities. All right, and a bad cover letter um, also rambles. Just say what you need to say um, and get to it in the shortest route possible. You don't need to have your cover letter rambling for 18 pages front and back it doesn't matter you know so succinct make it concise and do not ramble all right next question how much should you talk about what they need versus what you want we covered this a little bit but um, you really want to talk more about what they need you can go the 80 20 rule 80 percent of what they need 20 percent of what you're looking at but really you wanna kind of do just 100% what are they looking for and um, how you can fill that role or that need. Um, hiring managers are looking to find someone who can help them solve problems, cut costs, grow profits, expand new markets, and so forth. They want you in your cover letter to talk about how you can satisfy their needs and that your number one priority is making sure they succeed. Your future employer again, is going to care a bunch about you once you get hired and you establish yourself, but in those early stages of the interview process, make it about them, make them feel special. All right, next question, how to address a career gap in your cover letter? I know that there are times when you do have gaps in your resume, in your uh, professional life, it's okay. It happens to everyone. There are so many different reasons. So don't beat yourself up for this if you do kind of fall into this category. That said, if you think that they're going to wonder about something, assume they will. Um, and if they do, rather than pray that no one like notices or you know, um, that's all you're worried about is that they're gonna bring it up, go on the offense and control that message. You can do that in your cover letter. Um, so early on in your cover letter, you can explain, again, why you're the best fit for this company, what you can do to benefit them. Um, and you also may say something like, as I prepare to return to my accounting career after spending a year caring for an aging family member, I've been thinking about companies I'd love to represent, and you are top on this list, and here's why. So you can easily explain gaps um, with the truth, with you know, a sentence or two. It, it, you don't have to use your whole cover letter to explain that. Sometimes people just, they're curious and they wanna know, and that's how to explain that. Again, if you do have a career gap, 
and you're going to explain it within a sentence, make sure it's succinct, be unapologetic, unapologetic about it, and then move on to why you wanna work there. Again, get back on topic. The whole point of your cover letter is to showcase why you wanna work there and what you can bring to the company. All right, next question, how to address relocating for a job? Now, some of us love where we're at and we're living, but sometimes you do wanna to move to a different state um, or maybe a couple hours away and you would need to relocate. So um, definitely explain that in your cover letter. If you, know, you live in Chicago and you're applying for a job in New York um, and you don't mention that at all, they might think that you don't know um, that it's not you know, a remote position. You do need to be in the office and they might just toss you into the, the garbage. So make sure you address that right away. Um, if you're specifically targeting another location or planning on moving there soon, say that right away. So an example could be, as I prepare to move to Dallas, I've been researching digital marketing agencies in the area and I found ABC marketing and I love what I see. The point is you want the employer to understand that you're not just randomly applying for jobs all over, all over the country, um, but you have specific reasons for um, approaching this specific job in this specific location. And finally, our last frequently asked question is how to talk about a pivot in your career. It is definitely a good idea to mention a career pivot in your cover letter, otherwise the hiring manager might look at your cover letter and resume and wonder why you're applying for this job in the first place. Spell out in the letter how your current skills and experience will help you be a stronger performer in the field that you are working to enter. Uh, don't ever assume that anyone is going to deduce how or why you make sense for a role that's not a perfect match for your background. I know this happened to me. I started my career in marketing and advertising and when I pivoted to librarianship, um, I really had to talk about those skills that um, could transfer from one industry to another. So those are the frequently asked questions about cover letters. And that brings us to our final slide, which is the resources um, that I used for this class. Feel free to check them out on lynda.com, which you can access through the nileslibrary.org website. And other than that, thank you so much for coming to my class. I hope you learned a bit about cover letters. If you have any questions at all, please reach out to the Niles Library. We would love to help you. And good luck on your job search.